Today we're going to be doing a flower dissection. And let's, go be, let's uh, begin by going over the structures of a flower. So I'm going to start with the outside whorls, meaning the outermost leaves, and I'm going to work inward. So these outermost leaves right here are going to be called the sepals. And they actually offer protection. Before this flower opens up, they're going to help protect the delicate inner workings of the flower. Now, not only do we want to name these structures, but we want to count the number of these structures because we want to ultimately figure out, is this flower a monocot or a dicot? So if we go ahead and count these, one, two, three, four, five, six sepals. And then I also want to count the next uh, set of sepals too. One, two, three, four, five. Now typically, when you get multiples of three, you're looking at a monocot. And when you get multiples of four or five, you're looking at a dicot. So we're not quite sure yet. So we're going to go ahead and, and look at some other criteria. Now the next set, the next whorl here, the next set of leaves are going to be the petals with a T, petals. And we've got one, two, three, four, five petals. Now again, these petals are going to be modified leaves. You actually have a color, you've got a scent to these leaves, and they are very specialized for attracting specific pollinators to this flower. Now the next thing we're going to look at, actually uh, let's go back to the leaves. You can see the veins of the leaf. So look at the vein. You've got white veins here of the leaf. You can see that these veins actually branch. If you look closely, the leaves, the veins actually branch. And whenever you have branching veins, that's an indication that you're working with a dicot. If these veins were all parallel, like they would on a piece of grass, a blade of grass, then that would be an indication that it is a monocot. Now let's look at the next whorl which is going to be this right here. And these again are modified leaves. And this is going to be the male part of a flower. Now the male part of the flower is referred to as the stamen. And the yellow structures on the end are called anthers. And these anthers are held up in the air by this long uh, wire looking structure called a filament. And that filament helps hold the anther up high the anther actually makes the pollen, which contains two sperm, and you want to hold that up high so that the wind can blow it or an insect has easy access to it. The next structure, the innermost structure, is going to be the female part of the plant, called the carpal or pistil. It goes by both names. And it consists of three parts. The top part is going to be the stigma, and I like to call it the sticky stigma because it tends to stick or uh, attract pollen grains on its surface. Now the stigma is going to be connected right here to a long pipe-like structure called a style. The style goes all the way down to the center of the flower, right down here, this large, this large dilated area right here. That's going to be the ovary. So we're actually going to see the ovary in just a minute. It's going to be inside these structures. And that's going to be the ovary. And the ovary is going to contain smaller structures called ovules. And then the ovules actually contain microscopic structures called eggs. So let's go ahead and we'll begin by just pulling off these, these sepals. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to do the same thing again to this structure here. So one, two, three, four, five. So we removed and counted the sepals. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the petals. So one, two, three, four, and five. Again, if you look at the petal closely, you can see that the veins actually branch, an indication that it's a dicot. Now, down here, this is going to be the ovary, and we're going to cut that open in just a second. In fact, let's go ahead and do that right now. 
So I'm going to move this out of the way. I've got my dissecting tray right here, or dissecting pan. And I'm going to put this in here. And I've got this rubber mat. And the rubber mat is not used to hold instruments. You don't stick instruments in the rubber mat. It just destroys the rubber mat. So we don't want to do that. It's only used for cutting, so we don't dull the blade of our scalpel. Now I'm going to remove the scalpel cover very carefully. And I'm going to end up cutting the ovary. Now the ovary is this dilated area right here. So I like to actually cut it right in half, right, right in around here. I'm going to cut that ovary in half. And always keep your fingers away from the uh, sharp part of the scalpel. And I'm going to make one cut right there. And you can actually see the ovary in cross section here down below. This whole structure right here is going to be the ovary. Now I'm going to take a clean glass slide. I'm going to put it right here on my tray so the camera can see it hopefully. And I'm going to give the ovary a little squeeze. And you can see these small white round structures here start to come out. And those are the ovules. And I'm going to take a few of these ovules and I'm just going to kind of squeeze them onto this glass slide. Maybe with the help of my probe, I can get some of these ovules on here. And I've got one ovule on there. I can actually take the other half of the ovary. And I can do the same thing to it. You can see the ovary right there. If I squeeze it, again, some ovules begin to come out. And now I've got two ovules on there. And these ovules, what I want you to do is to get a dissecting microscope and look at this under the dissecting microscope. So you can see what an ovule actually looks like. The next thing we're going to do is take another clean glass slide. And now we're going to make a wet mount. I'm going to take a drop of water, put a single drop of water on this glass slide. There we go, right in the center. And I'm going to take this structure right here. And remember, these yellow structures here are the male part of the flower, especially up here. These are called the anthers. And the anthers contain pollen, they actually make pollen. And what I want you to do is just take it gently and strike it three times in the water, very gently. We don't want to get all kinds of other plant materials and debris in this water drop. So one, two, three. And that's going to be enough. Even though I can't really see anything there, I have pollen in that droplet of water. And the pollen grains are microscopic. If you have allergies, you'll know that they're there. You don't have to see them to know that. And then I'm going to take a cover slip. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my cover slip at 45 degrees and I'm going to slowly bring it up to the drop of water so that the water runs along the edge of the cover slip and then I drop it. And that way when the cover slip actually falls, air is forced out and we don't get a ton of air bubbles in our slide here. If you have a little bit of extra water coming out the edges here, I don't seem to have any extra water, but if you have some extra water coming out the edge, you can take a paper towel, just the very corner of a paper towel, and sort of just dab it gently. Not too much, because we don't want to suck all the water out from underneath this slide, this cover slip. So very gently just dab uh, some of the excess water with a paper towel, still leaving some water under there. And then you're all set. Take a look at that under the compound microscope. Use your parfocal technique. Keep your lighting down low because this is a, this is a living cell here. It has not been stained. It's got no chlorophyll or anything. So we want to use a minimum amount of light, and we want to slowly work up to high power. What you want to see, look for, at least in this particular case, 
is some round structures with little spikes coming off of them. And those were our pollen grains. And again, pollen grains come in different sizes and shapes, but typically they're kind of round, sort of uniform in size. If you see a lot of round structures that are different sizes, chances are you're looking at air bubbles. If you see structures that are fairly uniform in size, most likely going to be your pollen grain. And that's going to be it for the flower dissection.